Now that we've completed the baseline in the facility load section, we're going to move on to the installation or subsection tab. The information in this section is primarily focused on larger scale systems that are going to affect multiple buildings. Systems like central energy plants or large scale renewable energy systems. The first subtab here is called details and shows a brief overview of where you are in the process of this overall tab. The same information can be seen by looking across the subtabs in the section. Since the next one is dark black, no information needs to be entered on this tab, and we can quickly progress to the cluster and networks tab. In the cluster and networks tab, we're going to form our buildings into groups according to what type of energy systems currently serve their heating, cooling, and electric loads. Let's get started by clicking here to create a new cluster. We're going to call the first group centralized buildings because they're connected to the central plant. Here we could select between different electric or natural gas providers if we had entered those back in the rates section. Here we only have one of each uh, and so th those are automatically selected. If we had multiple ones we could select which one we wanted to associate the rates with for this specific group of buildings. We'll go ahead and click create. Now on the map we're going to see all of the buildings that are a part of our study. We have the same navigation toolbars available here on the upper left. You will have to move some of these out of the way if you want to use the additional items. For example, navigation. We can zoom out so that we can see all of the buildings. Now the buildings that we want to look at, the ones that are already centralized, are in this region. If we want to add those, we can click Add to Selection and highlight around those buildings. Right. We can determine this information at the site visit or by talking to the installation DPW folks uh, to determine which buildings are connected to the central system. All right, that's all that needs to be done here. If we wanted to add additional buildings, it works the same way uh, as in the facilities section. Uh, you could additionally just click add to selection and highlight more buildings or remove them using the buttons here. We're going to go ahead and save this group of buildings. And now we're going to put the rest of the buildings into another cluster. We're going to call those decentralized. Alright, and those will have the same utility system for this group. Now all the rest of these buildings have their own heating and cooling equipment directly on site for that building. Let's move over here and select the rest of these buildings. Alright, you'll notice the shape goes around all of the buildings here, but only the buildings we selected are appearing in this teal color. So this is just showing the outer area, but it doesn't mean that there's anything else going on with these inner buildings. They haven't been selected. Now if we want to, we can click this Calculate Load Information, and we'll have some information related to those buildings. This is being brought forward from the facilities information uh, rolled up all the information for these buildings and then displayed here. So we can determine the number of buildings, the amount of conditioned area, so that's in square footage, the ground coverage area, this is related to the yellow shape space you can see here. That kind of information is useful when determining whether or not a central system would make sense. There are certain rules of thumb to determine how much energy, uh, what is the energy density per area of the space, um, and so that's one reason you might want to look at that kind of information. You can also see the total electric load over the course of a year, the space heating load, 
domestic hot water, cooling load, and then some density information. So these, this, these are the densities I was mentioning a few minutes ago. We're going to see the uh, heating load density and the cooling load density over this larger area. And again, that's more important when looking at centralizing systems. We can also see the total electric peak. That's the high point for the year, cooling peak, and space heating peak. We'll go ahead and save this group of buildings as well. All right, so now we have all of our buildings broken down into these two groups that we're going to go on and analyze further. You can see we have all that same information that we could get in the map interface out here as well. And that information will come in handy later on. Okay, we're now ready to go on to the Equipment and Measures page. So we're going to come down here and click Continue.